you ever wish you could understand what your dog's saying to you? Well, researchers at the University of Michigan could be closer to unleashing that technology. They're using human speech models to help identify different types of barks to try and understand what our dogs are saying to us. They're using something called a, this AI system to train the system itself to categorize animal communication. The same models can also detect an animal's age, breed, and sex. So for a closer look at this, we're joined by Dan Riskin, CTV Science and Technology specialist. Dan, great to have you back on the show. Great to talk to you. Okay, so top question. Does it work? Can we understand the dogs? You know what? I wish it worked a little bit better. I think my expectations were set by Scooby-Doo, where, you know, you could understand exactly what the dog said and there was no ambiguity. What they did for this model basically comes out to a 62% accuracy in terms of playing a bark and being able to say whether that's an aggressive bark or a play bark or the kind of bark that a dog has when, when you get home from work. And, and so that's not that much better than what we can already do, but I will say this is a first step. I, there's also technologically, this is a really great achievement because they're taking uh, models that are built on human speech and applying them to a whole different species. But the other thing is they were able to tell the sex of the dog with 70% accuracy. And I don't think any human could do that, right? If you heard of a dog bark, can you tell if it's a boy or a girl? You can't. And this could with 70% accuracy. So there's something there. It's just not quite yet what I'm hoping it will be. Okay, so I can understand how we can like track that it can establish the sex of the dog. But Dan, since we can't ask the dogs how they're feeling, how do we know for sure that this works? Yeah, so it's it's tricky. And the, part of the reason that it's it's difficult to do this is because of the availability of data sets. So if you want a data set of people saying different words, that's very easy to get. You can get huge libraries of recordings of humans, but there aren't the same thing for dogs, especially not with every single bark having a label on it that says, oh, this was a bark because its squeaky toy got taken away, or this was a bark because it was excited that a cat walked past the house, or whatever it is. And so what they did is they trained a model, uh, they took a model that was already trained on human speech, and then they did take what data they did have for dogs. They, they recorded 8,000 recordings from 74 different dogs, different breeds, different ages, different sexes, and they, they got a little data set that isn't enough to train a model on its own, but then they fed it into the model that already existed. And what they were able to get from that is what we're talking about now. Okay, so Dan, I think the big question is, why did researchers want to study this? Like, are, is it just because they're really into dogs? And I love that <laughs> if they are, but what were they hoping for? I will say that in the press release, the, the researcher is photographed with his dog. So I, I do think that part of it is that they are into dogs. And I think that's an important piece of it. People follow the things that they're curious about and they follow the things they're interested in. And scientists are interested in the same things as normal people. So yes, part of it is that people do think it's fun to say, can I understand what my dog's saying? This is also really interesting in terms of taking a tool that's, that's trained on one kind of data set and applying it to a different kind of data, because you can imagine all kinds of applications there where you might train something on Earth and then put it on a spaceship and take it to Mars and then hope that it works there in a totally different environment. So being able to take one system and apply it to something else is a technological challenge, um, but also it's just a complex task and it's just a really hard thing to try to do. And ultimately, it could, it could improve animal welfare. It could improve how well people get along with their pets. And so there are applications as well. Well, and to that point, Dan, I think it can also help uh, not only humans take care of their dogs, but navigate potentially dangerous situations. Absolutely. So you can imagine all kinds of situations where there's a miscommunication between a dog and a person. And so that could be a warning bark that isn't taken as a warning bark. Or you can have a situation where an owner just can't seem to get along with their pet and they're just not quite uh, communicating well. And this might be a tool that people could use to understand a little bit better what the dog's saying. I think about this in terms of the noises that happen when I'm not home. Uh, if the dog's barking, uh, you know, there, there might be information that the dog's trying to communicate to me that I'm not receiving. So I can imagine in the future you get a little text message that says, your dog wants you to know that someone just came to the door, you know, something like that. And, and so there's some fun applications for this as well. Dan, real quick, do we have any like application for this yet? Like, do we know is there gonna be a caller like in the movie app where it like relays what they're saying? I think my big takeaway from this is not yet. This is still baby steps, but it is a first step in the right direction. So we can hold off on having our Scooby-Doo expectations at this point, and, uh, and hopefully down the road we'll have something a little bit better. Okay, it's pretty cool, Dan. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Now hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.